and it's a predator with two types of attacks. Here's your look at the Mattel Jurassic World Dino Rivals Dual Attack Concavenator. With the dual attack, you can either chomp or you can also tail strike any of the neighboring dinosaurs around you. Also to come included with the concavenator is a collector's trading card that comes included with many of the Dino Rivals releases. We're going to be having a look at the Concavenator today because of the good gestures of viewer Bill, who was nice enough to send me a whole bunch of Dino Rivals toys. Can't wait to get into these. So before we do anything, of course, we're going to have to figure out how tall the Concavenator is and taking the Ultra Measuretron to the very top of its spine. See that spine right there? That's where we're going to measure off to. Right to the very top of that, the Ultra Measuretron tells us that this dinosaur stands at 5.7 inches in height. Can you see that right there? 5.7 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be 14 and a half centimeters tall. We're gonna revert back, go back to the past, and we're gonna figure out, get this back to center, get this back to inches. There we go, all right. Sometimes that Ultra Measuretron 5000 tries to trick me, tries to get me all confused. Doesn't take much, but from tail to tip, tip of its nose that is, the tape measure in question tells me from here to here that the concavenator is about 11, about 11 and a half inches in length, which in centimeters works out once again to being 29, about 30 centimeters long. Just for a size comparison, I happen to have Velociraptor Delta here, really neat looking dinosaur. In fact, actually, all of these dino rivals are really neat looking collectibles because they have this bright pop of color that we haven't really seen before in the other Jurassic World or Jurassic Park toys. So I'm really digging these overall. And you can kind of see how much bigger the Concavenator is to someone like, say, Velociraptor Delta, who is way down here, down below. This dino rival gets himself a trading card, the Concavenator, a really neat looking trading card. But really, once again, I have to mention the fact that when Mattel are putting these inside the, basically where you see the dinosaur and then the back of the packaging, right in, in the middle of that, they put this card and they put it so that you can see the stats facing outward. The only problem is they tape it down. And I really think that there's another simpler means of doing that because all the time when I'm getting these cards off, you can even see it with hopefully the light reflecting off of it. There's a strip of tape right there and a strip of tape right there that I'm gonna have to very carefully try to peel off. I really don't wanna damage these cards and they really should find other simpler means instead of just simply putting tape everywhere. Anyways, any who's, the stats for the concavenator you're looking at a really high level, sevens for strength, sevens for speed, six a little smaller for intelligence, and veracity, you're looking at six as well. So generally pretty high for this particular dinosaur. As I said though, one of my favorite things about these new Dino Rivals toys is the coloring. Look at the coloring on these. They're almost taking risks that Perhaps they may not have been taken before, kind of now expanding out from their Jurassic Park, Jurassic World lines. These new Dino Rivals are really taking some really cool colored risks. I'm really liking it quite a bit. There's something about this one specifically that I love more than really all the others. When I saw this one that Bill had sent to me, my eyes must have just lit right up. The coloring on this guy is fantastic, or girl is fantastic. Kind of looks like from the side of it that you're looking at a distant island amongst kind of like a grassy terrain, like maybe there's a mountainside. There's kind of the greenery here for the island. Kind of imagining here that this is water. I use my imagination when I certainly can, because if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. As for the face, it's really a neat looking face sculpt. It's a shame, unfortunately, however, I don't know if it's just the type of plastic that they used, but this head here, the only head, of course, I might want to add, is a different color than the rest of his body. I'm not really sure why that be the case. The legs also seem like they could share the same kind of plastic as the head. As a result of that, both the hind legs as well as the front arms are the same coloring as the head, but the body is a completely different color. It's close enough but it's still enough that you still notice it. Um, as for its eyes, you can see right there some glorious, glorious color. 
I get so excited when I see collectible and toys hitting store shelves that just have pops of color. Blandness really isn't my palette choice. So I'm really loving the coloring that the Concavenator, which is a, such a difficult dinosaur to call, has these big bursts of color. Realistic color, well, that would certainly be debatable, but really nice color nonetheless. I keep wanting to play with his mouth because unfortunately the mouth always stays open. I guess really as a predator and a carnosaurus, a carnivore, carnosaurus being the movie, the very bad B movie based on uh, kind of a spin-off for Jurassic World, kind of the cheaper Jurassic World. Um, but a carnivore, of course, ones that eat meat would probably explain then why the concavenator, you could explain why it always has its mouth open. Uh, the coloring under on the underside, I would probably describe as best being something like a mustard yellow. Kind of like a gold color. Doesn't quite, unfortunately, gel as it gets a little bit further down its gullet section. It's a little bit not quite the same coloring, but sort of the same problem I have with the head being not quite the same as the rest of the body. This raspberry red, this pink color that's around its eyes, sort of almost looks like tribal markings, tribal paint, if you will. Quarter hat sort of has kind of like little kind of dagger shapes to them. Um, I don't know if intentional, I would imagine it to be intentional, but it almost looks like they've got lighter little speckles of a lighter pink right above that. I love that. It kind of reminds me of coral. Speaking of colorings and speaking of added things to this dinosaur, one can, again, certainly not overlook the fact that it's got this giant fin on its back. Sort of a reversal of roles, if you will, because normally when you think of a spine or a fin, as best this could probably describe this as, as a fin, you often think of it as the other way around, like a shark. I think of sharks, obviously sharks have their fins the opposite way. This kind of goes against the grain, literally and figuratively, as the fin faces the opposite direction. Kind of just like something that would be cutting through the water if you imagine this thing kind of creeps its way into the water walking towards possible prey that it wants to hunt it gets some additional yellowing down but down by the tail section here i'm sort of perplexed i don't know if it was supposed to be the same coloring as this i don't know if this was supposed to be the same coloring as this but it actually so happens to share the same coloring as the gullet it is, again, really strange because if you're looking at the top of the dinosaur, the spine has two colors. It's got the greenish color, the very dark forest green color. And then it's got this lighter kind of redded, rusted red brown. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, just knocking on your doorstep on a Saturday morning is the neighbor who's coming bearing mustard yellow. And again, I don't know why it's specifically here, because it's so abrupt, it just comes out of nowhere, just surprises you, even when you really weren't expecting it. Again, you, I mean, you could really nitpick the colorings of dinosaurs. None of us, unless you were to speak to a time traveler, and I always wish I could one day meet a time traveler, all the questions I would ask them, other than a time traveler who's traveled back in time, survived the dinosaurs, and have come back to tell us, nobody really knows what the colorings of these dinosaurs would be. You could say, well, maybe the concavenator, concavenator would have coloring on the back of its tail like this. I would be not one to argue the point because, again, I don't have any factual proof to prove otherwise. Now, for this dinosaur's uh, two different dual attacks, because it does have two, it has one in the spine, this fin crest here, and then there's a button on the top, both of which actually are pretty concealed. Yes, I know, if you flip it up, you can very clearly see the outline in which both of the activation buttons are kind of trimmed with. But still, if you kind of overlook that and look at it from the side, you really don't see it. Now, the main fin, this one right here, if you push it forward, and not so much push it down, but kind of push it on an angle, it flips the tail back and forth. Now, it only flips one section of the tail, you want to really like look at this and think that this is a second piece here that's also going to flip, but it actually is only this section of the tail right here, and it flips back and forth. The other dual attack happens when you press this button on the front, and when you do that, it opens and closes its mouth. Rather, it closes its mouth. Releasing it will open it once again to exposing its rather shiny tongue and, oh, grandmother, what big white teeth you have. 
So you have those buttons right there. And in theory, you could actually press both of them and you'll have, yes, dual attack marketing at its best. For this one's posability, uh, it doesn't really have anything in the head, even though it does have a cut looking as if you could rotate the head, but you really can't. The arms move all the way around and they also have hinges. So I don't know if you really want to. I mean, it kind of looks like he's holding back the walls that are closing in on it. But it does have that. I guess you could kind of hinge it out slightly. It's a little ridiculous to be having a hinge so extreme on a dinosaur that really you can't imagine him wanting to do this anyways, or you can't imagine any dinosaur wanting to do that actually. So it does have movement in the arms, slightly a little bit more ridiculous of the movement, but still nonetheless. And the hind legs rotate all the way around. There is slightly a hinge. I say slightly, there's a considerable amount of a hinge, but really hinging legs out serves no benefit to it because it looks awkward. And I'm actually even surprised it's standing the way that it is really when it comes right down to it. It sort of feels like a lot of these dinosaurs, when you get them out of the packaging, the defaulted stance in which the packaging had the dinosaur in the first place sort of is the same stance that you probably would want to keep the dinosaur in. Just if not, it would fall right over. Obviously, we're also going to find out a little bit more about the concavenator. So we're going to go into our fax app, which I still have on my phone, and we're going to go into scan. Now, I can't help but feel like this scanning options, many of the button options don't seem to work as well as they used to. I don't know if the app requires an update, but nonetheless, we're going to scan off the QR code. There it is right there. And let's learn a little bit more about the monstrous concavenator. And there it is right there. Once again, actually, very faithfully recreating the toy to the left. Again, it would certainly be debatable as to what exactly its color palette would be. Love that green, love that red, and love that mustard yellow. But let's find a little bit more out about the concavenator, selecting the stats that are currently available. Two are, are locked. This one is unlocked. It is believed she can only run in rapid short sprints. So dinosaurs that are running longer distance that are able to escape the clutches of the concavenator would likely be able to get away. I think also wasps do the exact same thing as well. They fly at short distances. They always say if you can outrun a wasp, well, the wasp will of course leave you alone. Anyways, that's not 100% true. Uh, next, her fossils were found in Spain by paleontologist Ortega es e Escaso and Sans. Ortego, or actually that's Ortega Escaso. I think that's how you pronounce it, and sans. There you go, I didn't know that. <laughs> I did not know that. And last but certainly not least, her powerful legs allow her to reach speeds of over 23 miles per hour. In other words, you would not be able to escape a concavenator, a concavenator if it was charging your way, unless you were to outrun it for long distances and then it would just give up and pursue something else. The chances of that happening though are very unlikely. Yes, it would be very unlikely for you to run into a real-life concavenator because, after all, the dinosaurs are extinct. Even though news reports indicate that scientists, I believe, are able to work on a dinosaur and bring back one in the next four or five years. I don't know why we've decided to play around with nature. We always know, based on the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World films, we always know how bad and how well that works out. And yet scientists, eager scientists, imagining to play with life, nonetheless, four or five years. Mark it on your calendar. That's when mankind comes to an end at the hands of dinosaurs. In the meantime, though, it is real unrealistic that you'd be able to see a concavenator uh, right now, other than going to your local retail stores and toy stores alike. See how I segue that over. The concavenator from the dual attack line of Jurassic World from the folks over at Mattel should be available now in local retail stores and toy stores alike, if you have a toy store in your area. Again, a big thank you to viewer Bill, who was nice enough to pick up a whole bunch of Jurassic World pieces, all of which we will try. I will try my darndest to have a look at in the next bunch of reviews. So you like dinosaurs and haven't felt quite like you were getting your dino fix on this channel, Rest assured, this humbled reviewer will be churning out some upcoming Jurassic World pieces, so stay tuned for that. 
In the meantime, though, if you guys haven't had a chance yet to hit that little subscribe button down below, what are you waiting for? Certainly more videos will be coming your way. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.